I have loved you. Their response, huh, wherein hast thou loved us? God says, I have loved you. In what way have you loved me? How have you loved me? What are you talking about, God? Is the response of the people. They're answering again, and it's contrary or even questioning what God had just said. From the Garden of Eden unto where the prophet Malachi is standing, they've witnessed God give a purpose to man within the Garden of Eden. They, they, they saw him give and help meet unto the man within the Garden of Eden. They saw when that fell apart, mercy extended by placing of a sacrificed lamb upon the nakedness of his people, symbolizing what he would do for them out of love in the future. After that, laws were given that would lead and guide and give structure unto the people, that they would stay on the straight and narrow, extending his love for them that they wouldn't fall. The protection and care and the mercy upon mercy upon mercy that God constantly extended in love towards his people. And when he says, I have loved you, that's all of this. You can behold and read and hear. God has indeed loved them. Yet ye say, wherein hast thou loved us? All this outlined word for word for word, the, the acts actions of a loving father towards his people and they say well how have you loved us and i was challenging god to prove his love what do you, what do you mean I don't, I don't i can't recall you loving us god puts a period on the statement i've loved you and then man goes and takes that satanically and wickedly and adds a question mark to that Wherein hast thou loved us? In that attitude comes, yes, in this story, and yes, in the context of what we're reading. But that same attitude happens each and every day to people within this room. As we go about our day, as, as we go through trials and hardships, as we, as we learn of, of health concerns, as, as, as our finances maybe aren't lining up, as things go wrong in our lives, and we're like, wherein hast thou loved us, God? Where is your love, Lord? I've loved you. That's his statement. That's the opening statement of this passage. I've loved you. And man denies that, questions that. When God says, I have loved, your attitude towards the scriptures needs to be, yep, yeah, amen, you have loved. Yeah, I've seen it time and time and time again. I don't feel it right now, God, but man, I know you have loved me and and. Praise the Lord, I know you love me still. We need to accept the clear statements of the Bible when God says, I have loved you, saith the Lord. We say, yep, amen. And yet Israel here, as our, as our poor example, immediately questions that. We need to accept these statements of the Bible, God speaking to us. We need to embrace them, realize them, reflect upon these things, and then act upon these things as they come into our lives, as we read the word of God. Don't put a question mark where God puts a period. Thus saith the Lord, that's it. That should settle it. Leave it alone. Just believe it. That's our only responsibility. People have often asked me, well, what do you think of 2 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 14? And I don't even know the reference, but I say, I believe it. I can answer it like that. I don't know what the Bible's teaching in that portion necessarily, but I can tell you today that no matter what is in here, I believe it, I trust it, I'm counting on it, I'm putting my whole faith, my whole very livelihood upon what's written here. Amen. I'm not going to deviate from that. When I was saved, that was the first thing I remember praying unto God. I said, I have found out that this world is so messed up. I have found out that I am so messed up. God, I give you a clean slate. If it's not in the Bible, it doesn't exist. And that's how I dealt with the first bit of my life. It made me a crazy person in the eyes of the world. It nearly ruined my marriage because my wife wasn't saved and could not fathom a man that had just cleaned his slate and given it entirely unto God to pen upon. Okay? But that was my heart's desire. And more than ever, I desire God to put that same, that same attitude towards the scriptures within me. When I open it, I believe it. I buy it hook, line, and sinker no matter what it tells me. We all need to have that attitude and have that heart towards the Word of God.